Welcome back. Now, in one of the first ever applications of the new IT rules, the Union Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has directed the Department of uh, Telecommunications and YouTube to block two news websites and 20 YouTube channels. Now, these sites and channels were all found to be malicious and carriers of allegedly fake and anti-India uh, content. Sources claim that the content in question could have originated in Pakistan and, in fact, may even have links to the Pakistan ISI. The, orders, the, the sources claimed was a first step by the ministry and were conveyed to YouTube's India as well as global offices. In fact, uh, let's uh, bring in another voice here. NS uh, Napinai, cyber lawyer, is joining us on the broadcast. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, your first uh, uh, perspective here with regard to this action that has been taken. This is the first time something like this is being done under these uh, new laws. Absolutely. But then if you look at the parent provision, which is 69A, from where this uh, emergency provisions emerge, it's not necessarily the first time that similar orders are passed. Of course, it is new when we talk about it being issued to DOT and uh, YouTube channels, etc. On the legal aspect, um, the there was occasion for the Bombay High Court to evaluate whether this particular provision Rule 16, which under which the emergency provision uh, has been invoked, uh, is uh, constitutionally valid or not. And the Bombay High Court consciously sought to not uh, pass any interim order in this effect. Similarly, the parent provision, which is 69A, was also reviewed by the Supreme Court, and it did hold it to be um, constitutionally valid. So when you look at free speech and uh, restrictions on it, Article 19.2 will apply. I know I'm getting very legal here, but this is the basis, the very foundation yes. in terms of how the Constitution works. So reasonable restrictions on free speech, where such speech impacts uh, national interests, sovereign rights, etc., etc., as set out in Article 19.2, are permissible. So okay. to that extent, legally it is fine, but remember, it's just emergency provisions and this can only be active for 48 hours. After that, the process, due process has to be followed to show whether there is reasonable cause for this blocking and a final order has to be passed to ensure its sustainability. Right. So in that interim period after the first 48 hours and while the rest of the due process is going on, the, these channels would still be uh, in the suspended phase. For 48 hours, they'll be in suspended phase, but thereafter, the final order will have to follow for it to be uh, sustained or continued. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so in terms of, uh, you know, of, I, I know you pointed out a lot of the, uh, you know, various uh, sections and articles, uh, but uh, the free speech aspect also that you spoke about and how this is, uh, you know, in, in context to that, uh, going forward, not in this specific case, but do you have any concerns at all about uh, how the application of these, this new laws in this kind of a context uh, would, would work? Well, that is always a concern which we live with because every provision which amounts to a restriction will always give rise to fear of abuse. So there are two things we need to delineate, the necessity and its usage, which are essential in terms of ensuring protection, and the abuse aspect of it, which is not what the law was intended for, but where it is not applied in the proper sense. And on that context, one necessary restraint and effective uh, checks and balances should be ensured. And where it fails, that's when the courts uh, step in. At this juncture, part three itself is a problem in the intermediary guidelines. And with 16, rule 16 forming part of part three, therefore also becomes, uh, you know, comes under a questionable uh, exercise of uh, uh, right. But 69A under the IT Act does not uh, come with any such change. So this is where the uh, uh, balances will also come into play in terms of to what extent can the, these restrictions be applied or not. And going forward, as I pointed out, the checks and balances part is what the Supreme Court relied on to say, therefore, blocking, monitoring, uh, decrypting, intercepting, etc., is permissible provided the checks and balances are put in place. 
So that's where the line really lies, you know, in terms of whether somebody is going to abuse or are just using it in terms of national security or protecting sovereign rights, etc. Absolutely. And I think only time will tell uh, on that front. Thank you so much for speaking to us with your perspective.